Praise the Lord, saints. We give God thanks. We give him the honor. We give him the glory for giving us this wonderful opportunity this afternoon that we can come in his presence. And most of all, ask of him for guidance and for directive so that we can walk and walk aright. And you know, this is, this is my mantra because we need to know God and we need to know him more than ever before. So as we enter into the word this evening, before we even go further, I'd like to ask God's guidance. Eternal and ever wise God, you are the Lord of our life and the God of our salvation. You are the star of the night and the hope of every nation. Then hear us, we pray thee, and grant us the guidance we need so that we will be able to give unto you as we ought and bless your holy name. And as we seek your word this evening, as we seek the understanding, as we seek the mystery within the word, for you say the word that I speak unto you, they are life. I come before you and I ask on behalf of all who would be listening so that we will be able to walk in peace, in love, and in unity, one with the other in Jesus' name. Welcome, Captain. We give God the praise tonight. Tonight, you would observe the forethought of God towards man or humanity, if I expand it. The forethought of God towards humanity. When I begin to focus on these words, especially that from the book of Acts, the eight, the, the book of Romans, the eighth chapter, where he began to speak to us according to the word. Hear what it says here. Paul began to share with us the things of the future glory. And that future glory, does it comes with a price. And this is something that we have to be willing to accept and to walk within. But hear what Paul, in his exhortation, said unto us in the 29th verse. And this is what really brought me back to this point as we are in the lesson, the seventh chapter of St. John's Gospel. So much is being thrown at us there, and so much wisdom there, so much for us to envision there. And it also reminds me of the book of Proverbs, Somewhere around the 29th chapter of the book of Proverbs, the 18th verse, it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. And we ought not to be like that because God has called us from a mighty long way. And if he has called us from where we were and where he is placing us and where he has placed us, not where he is placing us, where he had placed us, it is time for us to grow as that plant planted by the rivers of water, and he promised it will bring forth good fruit. Even within the, the, the drought of summer, you would be bearing good fruit. And this is what we are called to do. But we must have a vision, we must have an understanding, we must have, you know, we must seek to know where we are going. So as I begin to meditate upon the 8th chapter of, of Romans and the 29th verse, it caused me to set this the way in which it's set here. The form taught of God towards mankind. Hear what it says in the 29th verse of the 8th chapter of Romans. For whom he did foreknew, he also did predestinate. To be conformed into the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. As we go carefully into the word here tonight, we would realize the purpose of God creating us was to really have fellowship, sweet fellowship with us. That he would be able to observe what what happened in the Garden of Eden when Adam was first created? 
God used to visit him every day. Sweet fellowship. This is what God wants and desires from us. To be able to have that form of fellowship with us. But you would realize as we studied this chapter, the seventh chapter of St. John, many went astray and still believing that they could have walked for salvation. But from the time of creation, God wanted to have that sweet fellowship with us. And as we go back into the very first chapter of Genesis, the 28th verse, the 26th verse, he said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. You know, and as I begin to sit and focus and, and try to muse, as David said, he mused on the word of God. And this, I called you to do this. You know, just sit back and, and meditate. Let the word just begin to speak with you. Let the word begin to manifest in you. Let the word begin to show you the joy. So when I realized, I say, the foretaught, God's foretaught towards man, it is so that he could have abided with us. He could have, he wanted that relationship with us. And the only way that he could have had that relationship with Adam, he used to visit Adam every evening. God used to give up on his heavy schedule and visit Adam every evening. I want you to think about that. Having a conversation with Adam and asking Adam, well, how did the day go? What went on today? How are the plants treating you? Because, you know, God, I want you to take this in your mind. God foretaught. In order, creation had a foretaught. You know, in God's mind, it was always there. Observe the manner of creation. We became the last of all the creation in the world. And I want to say something that you should glorify God in. Every other thing that was created before us, were created for us. We should be able to say amen here. Everything that was created before us was created for us. We are the only one that was given dominion even over the work of the fingers of God. Psalm 8. So when we begin to sit back and we begin to meditate and we begin to focus, it should give us joy. And you would observe that as this is so beautiful. You would observe that there were those who still believed, especially the Pharisees, who believed that they had to work for salvation. And this is not how it should be. Now, I'm going to highlight some of these verses, but our main topic today is really verse from 37 through 39. That's what I want to deal with today in the seventh chapter. But let's walk back a little. Because if you don't know where you come from, you cannot know where you are going and you will not appreciate what you may achieve as you go along life's journey. And I think this is part of our problem, not being able to appreciate the things that God has blessed us with. Being called from wherever we were. He wants to deal with us. We could, he could have left us where we were. I was a proud Catholic, and I'm still upholding the teachings that was given to me in many ways. Most of all, I am acknowledging where I am now, and I'm acknowledging that God had called me from there for a purpose. And I'm going to seek to uphold the purpose for which he called me. And I hope you are doing the same. So as we go along here, it's not something that you could work for. It's not something that you can labor for. As Moses began to speak unto us in the 19th verse of the 17th chapter, of the 7th chapter rather, did not Moses give you the law and yet none of you keep it, the law? Why go ye about to kill me? Because I'm bringing a new message? Because I'm showing you and enlightening you? You know who I am, this is, you know, he said unto them. You know who I am and you know where I come from. And if only you would obey the scriptures, you would recognize that when Abraham spake, he spake of me. When Moses spake, he spake of me. When Jeremiah spake, he spake of me. How come? You cannot understand. And this is the problem that we are having today. We could not uphold the Lord then 
but we are trying to uphold it now. The only one who was able to uphold the law was our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by giving his life. And not only that, he gave his life. Something that we have to think about. Jesus came doing some work that they could not understand. Healing a withered hand man and bringing him back to the point whereby he can now serve himself and others. And they say Jesus had a devil. We have to think about where we are and where we are going. The only way, spiritual brothers and sisters, that we can be of some form of great use to God. Obedience will help us to understand whether the doctrines of God is true, of, may I say Christ, whether the doctrine of Christ is true pertaining to the Father, or whether the doctrine of Christ was pertaining to himself. And in everything that he did, he did it to give honor and glory to the Father. As he said in the 17th verse, if any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. So right here, he is telling us that the Father had sent me. I am not here to, to do my own. He that speak of himself speaketh his own glory. But he that speaketh of his glory that sent him, the same is true. And no unrighteousness is in him. I was sent by my father. And here I am doing my father's will. So when we understand this and we begin to, to truly give God the glory, it is important for us to humble, to submit, to walk in the way that is we, he expects us to walk. And we begin to judge others by the way they walk and their spiritual instructions, their spiritual calling. We begin to judge them because they don't move as how we just move. Or we don't, we just, no, God called you here as he called the children of Israel out of the world. Don't feel it was just Abraham in the world. Don't feel it was just Jacob in the world. But he called Abraham and he made a covenant with Abraham. And the, the beauty of that covenant is with blood. Started with circumcision. Then he sent his son. His son had to die. And this is how we go. The prophets had to die. Jeremiah had to die. The shedding of blood. But I want you to remember this. Where did it all start? And how did it all start? It started because of disobedience, the shedding of blood. When, he, when Adam found himself in a situation where he could have no longer dared, you know, the elements. Remember what I'm saying? Adam was, he had a built-in thermometer. When it's winter, his body would adjust to the weather. But the moment he stepped away and disobedience stepped in, he had to seek for fig leaves or whatever leaves there were to clothe himself. But God, in his mercy, in his love and fellowship for humanity, coming down to earth already knowing what is going to happen, and knew that Adam had fallen short, this is where he called him, Adam, Adam, where are you? Adam in the garden hiding. What has happened, Adam? And we begin to throw blame. The woman that you gave to me. And God, in his love for humanity, even though I want to share this with you tonight, Adam was clothed with the Shekinah glory because Adam was created in the love, listen, in the image and likeness of God. So that Shekinah glory that was upon the Father, the moment he stepped away, had left him. So now God had to, Lord Jesus, God had to find a way now to clothe him. So the only thing that God could have done was to kill that Lord Jesus, have mercy. The only thing that God could have done was to slaughter that animal. 
to sacrifice that animal to make clothes for Adam. And I want to say to you, it was Adam and Eve because Eve was in Adam. When God created Adam, he said he created he, him, male and female. I think we are taking this term in a wrong way. But anyhow, before God had to, to really realize what was going on, we're not going on to the foreman now, right now, because that is another story. But I want to take, con continue here, where God wanted to have that relationship with us. And if only we were obedient and hold on, we would know the true doctrine. We would not be, listen, why do you think so many of us are running here and running there and believing, and all of a sudden, we believe this now, and this is a new something. Oh yes, and I, I just discovered a new God. I just discovered all of this. No, church. No. If we stay obedient to God, we will know the doctrine of God, and we would not be going, well, this is a new thing, and this is a new thing, and this is, you know, no. We would be staying steadfast in the love and in the fear of God. But unfortunately, many of us seeking so many other ways, we're seeking new ways to serve God. I want to remind you, God is the same God of yesterday, today, and forevermore. And once we can reach or come to that sense of understanding that God is not a God who changes, from the, 13, from the third chapter of Genesis, he knows and he said unto us the messianic pronunciation was, was made there from, from Genesis 3.15, pertaining to his son coming and to, to die, to win us back, to reconcile us, to bring us back, so that one day we would be able to say, Abba, Father, what a joy. But we couldn't see it, but there was a process. And that process took a period of 42 generations before our Lord and Savior could have entered into this atmosphere in the shape of man. You know, this is really beautiful. And as we, the more we begin to, to meditate upon this lesson here, is the more we are going to, to understand what God is doing so I'm going to jump here back. Remember, we went over this lesson, so I'm just highlighting a bit here, and we are going to move forward. I want to start with the 36th verse. Of the same chapter, and we're going to deal with this thing here. This is beauty here, church. And this is what we have to learn. So in order, when you begin to think about the four word, the four taught, those whom he foreknew, he predestinated. What do we mean by that? He has set you in a place. And this is why he said many are called but few are chosen. So you are in that chosen place. Being called out from wherever you were. And you are now set aside. For those whom he predestinated then he called. And those whom he called he justified. And those whom he justified, he sanctified. And those to whom he sanctified, he glorified for a purpose. And this is what had happened. And we can see that as we go along in the word, because it's going to make us even more the wiser. So my cry to you today is to remember that we cannot work for salvation. What is needed of us is that we be obedient to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the one that would lead us and guide us as he was with Jesus. So he is going to be with us, dwelling in us. The one that the world cannot understand. He is among us, but we don't know him. And we have to take that time to seek to learn him. Hear what he said in the 36th verse. What, or the question that the Pharisees were asking. When he said unto them. I'll have to jump back here. Then said Jesus unto them. The 33rd verse. 
Yet a little while I, I am with you, and then I go unto him that sent me. Yet a little while I am with you, and after that I am going unto him that sent me. So I'm not here taking no power. I have to go back. I, I am the messenger. I am the reconciler. I was sent here. John preached about me. John baptized in my name. John said, the one that is coming after me is mightier than I. Who's the, even the latchet of his shoes I am not worthy to lose. But Jesus is speaking in parables. And this is why you and I, as we are taking these times to break down these words, and I pray that you, you all go back and listen to, them, to these messages and make your comments. I would appreciate that. He said, you shall seek me and shall not find me. And where I am, thither ye cannot come. You know, sometimes we stand up in the churches and I hear ministers saying, Oh, my father is in heaven. Oh, your mother is in heaven. Your daughter is in heaven. No. He said, listen to the words. Take these words for what it says. Don't, don't add to it. And this is what we do. Your, 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 your parents, they're with the Lord. I'm saying to you, the question was asked, who are these and those? They wasn't in heaven. But they were those who went through great trials and tribulation and have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. And they were asking the question, how long, Lord? How long? Are we going to be waiting here? It's none of your business. Just wait. I'm taking care of you. You're in a good place. You're robed in white. Wait. Humble. And even in that sanctified state, they were still seeking, well, how long to, that are you going to take vengeance? Perfect purification or sanctification had not yet taken place. I am saying that to you. Because this is what the word says. So when we begin to understand these areas here, what Christ was speaking of in the 34th verse, he was speaking of his death, burial, and resurrection. Where I am, he cannot come. No man, no one could ascend to heaven except that he, that, and, and I would like to read that for you. I think it's John 3.13. Hear what it says. I want you to get an understanding of it. And no man, I'm reading John 3 and 13. And no man had ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. This is mystery here. Even the Son of Man which is in heaven is also a state of mind. And his state of mind was so pure that he had that connection with the Father. Let me read that again. I want you to get this, please. You know, sometimes it's so nice. I'm, I'm enjoying these moments. I just want you all to, to be supportive of what we are doing and, and bless God in some way. And no man had ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, is, and who came down? It was only the Son of Man that, that could have come down from heaven. But how did he come down from heaven, church? Church, there are some things in this Bible that we are not being taught, neither are we seeking to know or even asking the question. And we have to be able to get this in our mind. Hear what it says here. I want you to hear this. I'm reading from the first chapter of Luke, from the 35th verse, the 34th verse. Then Mary said unto the angel, How shall we, we speak in spirit here now? Because this is where I want you to go. This is what we want to do. We want to understand spirit. You know, there are those of us who do not believe in, in the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. We don't believe. But I want you to know something. It's in the Bible. It's left to us to see it and to understand it. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing that I know no, not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, Here he says, This is the angel Gabriel speaking unto the mother-to-be of our Lord. And I'm speaking past tense. The mother-to-be of our Lord. 
The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. You have to now understand what is the reason for the Holy Ghost coming upon Mary? It's to prepare Mary, and I will show you what is happening here. Because we, we override and we overlook these things. We, we, we love to read. And you know something I always say, we are avid readers, we are good readers. But we have to, to, to joke a little bit sometimes, which means follow your, your, your quotations mark, at marks and see what they say. Hear what it says? The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. Come on. And the power of the Most High shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also that holy thing which shall be born of thee, oh beautiful, shall be called the Son of God. Is it mysterious here? Are we, are we seeing anything here? Am I moving your mind a little bit so that you can, can move beyond just what the word we hear? Can you walk in the way of the Spirit? Can you allow yourself now to view this holy thing that shall be placed in you, that shall be born of you, which means this, oh, this Spirit, this Spirit of the God of heaven that is now about to be placed in the womb of Mary to, trans, to be transformed. And this is what it says here in the book of Acts. I want you to read this again. I want to read this for you again. These words play an important part. And we need to hold on to these words and really work with them. Hear what it says. For whom he did foreknew, he also did predestinate to what? To be conformed into the image of his son. To be conformed into the image of his son. This is what we are called to do. So the purpose of God having us, creating us, and giving us the privilege of life that we can rise up and we can say, and are we yet alive? Is so that he would be able to have sweet fellowship with us. It's so that he would be able to walk and talk with us along the way, guide us, protect us, keep us, feed us. We must acknowledge we have no help but thee. And we continually yet seeking your blessing then if our God, our Father be. And we continue to breed, Savior, breed forgiveness over us. For all our weakness thou dost know. And this is the reason why. Christ is coming and going through these changes and making known unto us and he's speaking to us in so clear a word. In this 34th verse, he says, you shall seek me and shall not find me. And where I am, thither ye cannot come. But we couldn't understand. Isaiah had told us this. Jeremiah had told us this. How his garment will be rolled in blood and all the sacrifice and the, the listen our burdens will be upon his shoulders. But we never listened. We continue to walk in our own ways. And this is not the time that we should be continually walking in our own ways. And you would realize that even in the 35th verse, the Jews, Said, then said the Jews among themselves, whether, you see, they couldn't understand. This is why he said, I speak unto you, I speak in, unto you in parables, not that the world might understand. So when we begin to walk in this way and we begin to allow ourselves to receive of the word of God, we would find peace. So even when you find yourself in certain situations and you begin to to be looked down upon. Hear what it says in the same 31st verse. Where, are we, where are will he go? That we shall not find him. Will he go among the dispersed? I'm a Jew. I'm one of the children. And anyone who is not of us. 
is but a dog. Even Jesus Christ himself used those words, you know. When he said unto the Samaritan woman, the Syrophoenician woman, I cannot take the bread of children and give it to dogs. But she said, yeah, Lord. But when the drags, when the crumbs fall from the table, the dogs take it up and eat it. He said, I've never, you know, now he began to rebuke the Jews. He said, I've never seen so great a faith in all Israel. And her needs was met. So, I'm, hello, I'm calling out to you. Let us continue to walk in the way that God wants us to walk. Let us continue to ask of God and to seek him. You say, whether you, you go among the dispersed, the Gentiles, and teach the Gentiles, and leave us the children. And they begin to question, what manner of saying is this? That he said, you shall seek me and shall not find me. And where I am, thither he cannot come. They couldn't understand. Even though you're talking about these were the men of, of knowledge in that day. These were the wise men in that day. And they still could not understand what was being said. We have elders who were never able to read and write. And when you read this to them, they, they are able to explain it unto you. It is because of God's Holy Spirit. And we must understand this. When we remind ourselves, as I'm seeking to remind you right now, the elders who were midwives, the elders who would, your foot sprain, and what's going to happen? You go to them and they would be able to, to play with that vein and find that vein and pull that vein and you know, where did they learn all of these things? They didn't go to chiropractor school as we have today. When that old lady, you come and you, you, you butcher fall and she would cup your chest. We have that today now. We're seeing that. Everybody is doing that now. Where did they get this knowledge from? You back open and you go to my Ruben and what she would do, she will put a, a cup on your back. And lie down there and when that thing finish, she burn your waist and she tell you, go ahead, don't lift up nothing heavy for a few days. She didn't go to school for all of that. And this is what the Holy Spirit is all about. The teacher, the promise that I said to you has been fulfilled. When Jesus took up his seat at the right hand of the Father, he sent the Holy Spirit. And how important is that? Jesus did not leave us wanting. Here were the 37 verses saying, In the last day, that great day of the feast, and I want you to know this feast that we are speaking of here is the feast of, or was the feast of tabernacle. And what does the feast of tabernacle mean? Again, I repeat. The gathering or the ingathering, the feast of ingathering, where all the saints are coming together, we become that temple of the living God. And this is what he said. He will dwell in us. So as we continue, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, now we're not speaking. You see, as you, if you believe on me, as the scripture, as the word that was so long before me said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And I want you to know what this verse really means. It really means that you would go there. Remember the last command he gave us? The great commissioning? From Matthew 28, verses 19 through the end. Go ye therefore into all the world and preach the everlasting gospel and baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the very end. Rivers of water here, speaking of the Spirit. And you're going to see how important this really is. As I begin here, 
to to speak on the 35th on the 39th verse and then we are going to go into some other scriptures here that will help us to understand more of the way of the spirit but this is speak of the spirit the 39th verse the, so it's explaining itself but we have to take the time to listen to what we are saying this is why i would ask you when you're reading don't just read and run your eye through the word speak to yourself this is something one of my elders taught me he said if you're reading and you're not comfortable with your reading then you're going to practice to read better but if you're reading and and you're comfortable with your reading and you know that listen you may make a hiccup here or there but once you're reading and you're not feeling comfortable and oh you you're missing out a word here and you're missing out a word there because you run over a word practice don't beat yourself because we were never taught to read in you know public reading so now we are a new is a new game so practice and the only way you can practice is by reading to yourself and reading aloud and when you do this you are going to realize that your your vocabulary is even coming more profound you know sometimes i listen to some of our leaders i speak of leaders in 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 big and the bad english that they're speaking and they believe that they're doing it all well remember you are now exposed to the world the world is listening to you you on facebook now and we're running to be on facebook then let's correct our languages and even though when you make a mistake because we are accustomed speaking in slang when you make a mistake correct yourself you will hear it you will know when you make a mistake you will know when you make an error and i'm not here trying to pull down anybody if we are going to be on facebook let us be on facebook with proper language not we did this and we did that and he did that no we don't want that that is not what we are selling here remember the greatest salesman in the world was our lord and savior jesus christ and if you listen carefully to his language he didn't only teach us spirit but he also teach us how to speak and this is what he is saying here hear what it says here but that which he spake he of the spirit but this spake he of the spirit which they had that believe on him should receive for the holy ghost was not yet given because jesus was not yet glorified you see how powerful these words are the holy spirit was not yet given and we are speaking here now in the time of john's baptism the holy spirit was not yet given no and why couldn't it be why should do should we have to wait on the holy spirit will the only person to send the holy spirit unto us is our lord and savior jesus christ and he had not paid that price he was not yet glorified the words speak for itself he was not yet glorified again i repeat he was not yet glorified he did not pay that full price of sin he did not yet cry out to the father and say father it is finished i have done finished the work that you sent me here to do it was not yet finished and this is what we have to see many of the people therefore the 40th verse when they heard this saying said of a true this is a prophet now i want to deal with this 39th verse especially and as we deal here with this the purpose of god of the purpose of god sending his son the purpose of god sending his son to be glorified the purpose of god sending his son to be that great reconciler the purpose of god sending his son to bring us back is because he wanted to have that sweet fellowship with us he said i would that none be lost 
but that they would all, or we would all come to the knowledge of the truth and be saved. And you would realize that when we receive of God's Holy Spirit, there are certain things that is required of us. It's not to seek to deny someone else. But we should be here to encourage. And you're going to see this. I want to take you back to the book of Acts. The 19th chapter. When Paul recognized the true joys of serving God in the spirit. When he went on his journey. Wherever he went. Those whom he came in contact with. And I want you to know this. When Paul ended up in Ephesus, according to the 19th chapter of Acts, and he met the 12 who were converted by John baptism, who baptized them in the name of Jesus, and I, I say this purposely, who baptized them in the name of Jesus because there was no other name. And even though he was not yet glorified, his name was powerful. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Even them several devils, even that young man who was chained in the tomb and they had to keep him there. He and all cried out, Jesus I know. Paul I know. But Simon, you I don't know. I want you to know the name of Jesus and how powerful it is. There are many of us who are going around and condemning, but the languages, languages are different. We don't speak the same language. Yes, his name is Yeshua, according to the Hebrew word. But we calling him by the name of Jesus does take nothing away. If you are praying in the name of Jesus and you're not getting any answer, something is wrong with you. Check your heart. So I ask you to continue praying. And look at what has happened here. The 19th chapter. If I should read from 1 through 5, but I won't, I will hold up where I need to. So I'm going to take from the second verse. He entered into Ephesus. And he said unto them, have you received, you see what, you see what a joy here is? So when you, you have something and you don't want to share, Holy Ghost blessing you, but you're not sharing with anybody. You know, because this is mine. The Holy Ghost gives you a, a message to go tell the world. The Holy Ghost said, deny yourself the world for sake. Take up your cross and follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. The, that's what the Holy Ghost said. Take up your cross and follow me. And when we understand what this means, we are going to find that peace. Again, I say that peace which passes all understanding. And he said unto them, have you received, have you received the Holy Ghost? Hear their answer, since ye, were back, since ye believe. And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost or not. So again, being baptized in the name of Jesus was important. But what did that mean? It simply meant that they were baptized unto the baptism of repentance. Again, remember what I said to you. Jesus was not yet glorified. Jesus was not yet glorified. So they could not receive the Holy Ghost. Because Jesus was not yet glorified. And the moment that Paul laid his hands upon them, what happened? They received the Holy Ghost. I, 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 I you know, admonish you to go and read uh, Acts 19 from verses 1 through 5. And immediately they received the Holy Ghost and they began to speak in tongues. And prophesy. 
They began to speak in tongues and prophesy. You know, I want to deal a little bit with, the, with this Holy Ghost because it's so important here for us to see. And I want you to know this. I am very, very anxious for you to know this. So that I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians 6. 1 Corinthians, the sixth, the sixth chapter. And let's see what it says here. Let's see what it's telling us here. Let's see what we can get from this here. If we are walking right in the almighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The first Corinthians, the sixth chapter, I'm going to read the 19th verse. It says, What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and are now your, listen, and are not your own. For we are bought with a price. You see what the glorification is speaking of here. Christ was not yet glorified, so they could not receive the Holy Ghost. This is key here. This is, this is the important thing here. Christ was not yet glorified, so they could not receive the Holy Ghost. I'm going to read that again for you from the 39th verse of this seventh chapter of sin. So when we speak, and sometimes we speak, and we speak so broadly as though we know it all. But if I'm asking the question, where in the Bible does it say this? Where in the Bible does it say your, your daughter is in heaven? Where in the Bible does it say your father is in heaven? Where in the Bible does it say your brother, your mother who died is in heaven? Nowhere. But I'll tell you what John said in the third chapter of St. John's Gospel, the 13th verse. He said, no man had ascended up to heaven. You hear, even the Son of Man, which, listen, the Son of Man is the one who came down from heaven. And even the Son of Man which is in heaven, a state of mind. And the heaven that we are going to enjoy is this earth. And this is what John said. I saw a new heaven and a new earth descending. And no light, no street light was needed there. Because Jesus and God the Father was that light within that area and in that time. So hear what it says here in the 39th verse. But this spake he of the Spirit, that is what he means, he said, when the rivers of living water will flow. Sometimes you wonder, you're lying on your bed and you're hearing voices and the Holy Ghost talking to you and because we were never taught, we don't understand what is happening. We, would, we have to be taught now to communicate. The scripture tells us that any spirit that cannot confess that Jesus Christ was sent in the flesh is not of God. So when you hear in a voice, it's not all the time it's some devil. Prove the spirit in the name of Jesus. Ask a question. And then we would be able to do all that God has for us to do. Hear what it says here, church. Which day, listen, but this speak here of the spirit, which they believed on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost, uh, uh, listen carefully, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given to no man. Because Jesus was not yet glorified. Jesus was not yet crucified. Jesus was not yet sitting at the right hand of the Father and making that intercession. Jesus did not yet give the authority to the Holy Ghost to come. So until he gave authority, the Holy Ghost cannot come. But I want you to see that the Holy Ghost was still working as God gave utterance, the Holy Ghost was working. I want to share this with you, church, because I'm not asking you to go there, but I'm asking you to take note. I'm going to the 35th chapter of Exodus. I'm going to the 35th chapter of Exodus. And I will show you something here that is so powerful that you would recognize that the Holy Ghost was working, but not with everybody. 
The Holy Ghost was at work in the life of humanity, but not with everybody whomsoever God seek to use. And he used the Holy Ghost with the prophets. This is why Samuel could have prophesied. This is why Ezekiel could have. And you hear what Ezekiel said? He said, I was taken out in the spirit. But I want to see something here that is so important for us to know. I'm going to read from 31, verses 31, 35, 31. 35, 31. And hear what it says. This is the gathering of workmen to work in curious metals, to work in things that the natural human being was not capable of doing. It started somewhere. God is the one who starts every living thing upon the face of the earth. So here what is going to happen. Moses was commissioned to gather workmen. Workmen to work on the things of the church. And hear what God is saying here. And Moses said unto the children of Israel, See, the Lord had called by name Bezir, the son of Uriah, the son of Hor, the son of the tribe of Judah. Listen to this. And he had filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, and in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship, and to devise curious works, to work in gold and silver and in brass, and in the cutting of stones, to set them, and in carving of wood, make any manner of cunning work. And he shall put in his heart, listen, that he shall teach this was not given to everybody. He placed it now in the heart of Biel so that now the scripture is saying here, and he shall put in his heart that he shall teach both he and Ohaliba and Ashmanat of the tribe of Dan. And they shall be filled with the wisdom of God. But some, someone who have read a little bit might even say, but what happened with Aaron's garment? And you will see that in the 28th chapter of the same Exodus, as it speaks here. I want to say this to you, and I want to say it clearly. I want you to know that even the art of tailoring, God had given this ability to man. Man was not able to do it of himself, begin, beginning with Adam. God is the one who killed the animal and clothed Adam with the skin. He fashioned it. It wasn't Adam who per performed the first sacrifice, the first blood sacrifice. It was God. And this is why he sent his son and he said, no longer do I need this because my son has paid that price. So what I'm showing you here now is the clothing, the, the art and wisdom of tailoring every living thing that you could Think about God. It started with God. It started with God. And I want you to see this here, church. The third verse. And the Lord spake unto all. Listen. Let me take it a little higher. And thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron, thy brother, for glory and for beauty. I want you to. You know, some of you, you put down your holy garments. You put it down. You're not making your garments. You're walking anyhow now because, you know, I, I know I'm a spiritual person, so I could walk anyhow. I don't need this. But I want you to hear this. And thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron and his brothers, for Aaron thy brother, for glory and for beauty. And thou shalt speak unto all that are wise-hearted, whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom that they may make Aaron's garment to consecrate him that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. You were given an office. You were called in a certain way. You know, and you were robbed in a certain way. And all of a sudden now you're not making your garments. 
the way God called you to make your garments, you're not using the garments that God gave you to use. You're using whatever you feel like and speaking the word of God. This is what I'm speaking here. The word. The word, church. See how important this word is. When we begin to walk in this, and we begin to understand this, and we begin to allow the word to dictate our movement, not how we feel. Not how we feel. But let us walk in the beauty of God. Let me read from verse 50, chapter 52 of Isaiah. Let me give you something here. He said, Awake, awake, and put on thy strength in your garment that was given to you is your strength. O Zion, put on thy beautiful garment. O Jerusalem, the holy city, from henceforth, therefore, shall no more come into thee, the uncircumcised and the unclean. When you listen, I just want you to focus on that first verse of the 52nd chapter. And when you go down, he tell you, get up, you know. He says, shake yourself from the dust. You come into church, dress anyhow now because, well, I don't have to do this, or the mother does do that, or the brother does do that. I'm speaking to you, whoever you may be. Think about it. Think about what he said here. Think about what he is saying to us. To walk in the spirit. You see, and as we begin to understand what is happening here, in order for, listen, for Aaron to minister unto God in the priest's office, he had to use the garments that was given to him. I'm speaking to my brothers and sisters. These are not my words. The headline in this Bible here it says, The Lord will deliver thee, deliver Zion from captivity. But he called you to walk in a certain way. Because when you do so now, and you place them garments on you, Holy Ghost could now work with you. That doesn't mean to say if you're in a certain place and the Holy Ghost have to use you, he cannot use you. But when you come in his presence, remember what the 28th Exodus says. When we come in the presence of God, to offer in the priest's office. Your garments play an important part. For this reason, he called us from wherever we were. From wherever we were. And he placed us where we are. Under certain anointing. Let us be wise. You know, I had a beautiful sister. When I was about to to be ordained a bishop. Being a Catholic and yet still baptized in the name of the Lord, she was given a garment to give to me. She said, don't go and buy that out there. This is what you have to use and I have to make sure that I get it made for you. We are spiritual people. And let us walk according to the light of the word. That the Holy Spirit will be able to manifest. Oh, when I read this, because in studying the lesson, this is all where it sent me. It sent awake, awake, put on thy strength. O Zion, put on thy beautiful garments. Oh, I can't use this to do that, and I can't use this to do that. Come on. You're not speaking to me. No. This is what he gave it to you for. Yes, we all, I mean, we should have special garments that we could use in certain places and for certain things. And if we, we, we appreciate ourselves to the fullest, as someone said to me, I always have a substitute. Okay, this is what I'm going to use here. This is my expensive garment when I have certain things to do. And I'm going to use the cheap one when I have, yes, it's the same garment. It doesn't matter. It's just that you realize when I go out there as a royal, I must be seen as a royal. I mustn't be seen any less than a royal. This is important. But what is too good for God? This is the question that I ask you tonight. 
What is too good for God? Think again. Don't answer me. Answer God. What is too good for God? Church, <laughs> we have, I'm going to close with this verse. I'm going to close with this verse. 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 13. 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 13. And hear what it says. For by one spirit, so this separation that we continue to walk in, we need to break that down now. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Whether we be Jew or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit, for the body is not one member, but many. My hand have many members. My body have hands, head, feet, eyes, nose, nostrils, ears. So we have to learn to walk in that unity. And this is what we have to think about. You know, I want to finish this chapter, but I'll finish it when we come again. And we'll be going, you know, while I am asking you to study with me, I'm, I'm just, I don't want to just come and sit here and speak to you. So I want you to study with me. So when we come, we're going to, hopefully, we're going to hit it from the 41st, from the 41st verse, all the way down to 52. We're going to try to end this chapter. But just remember, we are all one. You know, we just sing it, we are one in the spirit. Let us really walk with that. And let us be humble enough so that when the challenges of time should come, we would be able to do like David. Say, have mercy upon me, O God. According to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. We don't need excuses. We don't need this reason why. Or this reason why. God, listen, there is nothing that you can do for God that goes in vain. So may he bless you all tonight. May he make his face to shine upon you all tonight. May he give you that peace which passes all understanding. And I pray that as you open and you listen, you would be able to share this message somewhere. I give you the freedom. You can personally inbox me. You can put it, on, put it here. Ask your questions right here. And I will answer you wherever. You can find me on, a, you know, WhatsApp. You can find me on Messenger. If you want to have a private conversation, I am willing to do that. If you want to op generally open that, that others would see and learn, I am open to that too. So let us walk together and let us understand what God is doing for us. So again, we're going to come back when we come back. It's going to be... What good could come out of Jerusalem, Nazareth? Could anything good come out of Nazareth? We're going to deal with that. Because this is how the Jews were thinking. And this is how we find ourselves thinking today. We lead at this and, and you know lead at that and good. And, and you know lead at this and, and don't, we have to think again. So my call to you is let us surrender to Jesus. And let him have his own way. God bless you all tonight. And thank you for the opportunity that we can share this moment. In the almighty name of Jesus, be of good courage and he will strengthen thine heart. Good night, one and all.